October 8 at London saw Tuarina is set to be a historic night from British boxing as an age-old family feud is reignited. This fight is an absolute monster. Chris Eubank Jr. and Conor Benn will continue a simmering family feud that has spanned more than three decades and defined an era in British boxing when they collide in a blockbuster showdown. The biggest in British boxing, perhaps one of the biggest ever in the sport in this country. The fathers of both men, Chris Eubank Sr. and Nigel Benn, captured the imagination of the boxing world in the 1990s with two brutal fights. Ben Eubank fight made their careers, made them who they are. Ben was the people's favorite, while the arrogant Eubank loved to be hated. The ego has landed. Their first encounter is one of the greatest fights in the history of the sport, while their rematch in 1993 at Old Trafford was watched by half a billion people worldwide. Eubank slipping on the canvas there. Left hook. Two contests they fought provided drama and entertainment for die-hard fans, but also cut the attention of the wider public. I was being a warrior, that's what people came to see. We will go all the way back to the 90s for this epic rivalry, when Ben and Eubank Sr. went head-to-head -head for the world middleweight and super middleweight title. There was never any pretense about Nigel Benn. The magnetic to weight world champion was an animalistic and brutal fighter, the Mike Tyson of Britain's middleweights. Like a prime Tyson from 1986 to 89, Benn just knocked out his opponents one after the other. I paid for it. From the time he turned professional in 1987 until 1989, Ben stopped the vast majority of his adversaries within two rounds. Mean and merciless, the Dark Destroyer won his first 22 fights by knockout attacking the opposition with little power shots and when he was hurt himself, there was no fighter more dangerous. I knew I had the punch in power, and it all paid off. This pattern remained the same until he faced Michael Watson from Britain's Commonwealth Middleweight Belt in 1989. Watson used the tight defense and fine boxing brain to smother Ben's aggression against him until Ben collapsed from exhaustion in the sixth round. Ben rebuilt his career by doing it the hardest way a fighter can. He went to campaign in the United States. He captured the WBO middleweight crown from Tick Tough Warrior, Doug DeWitt, in eight savage rounds. I think he has the ability to be uh, the coming superstar. In his first title defense, the trigger happy Brit was pitched in against the equally explosive American veteran, Iron Barkley. Right ben destroyed Barkley in the opening round and set shock waves through the sport. Nigel Ben today fulfilled a promise. Eubank's first five fights took place in the US before the eager young prospect decided to move back to the UK in 1988. He came into my gym in 1988 and he said to me that he would give me a trial. After a string of impressive stoppage victories, in February 1989 he made brief headlines in defeating Jamaican Anthony Logan in an undercard match to a Nigel Benn headline show. Um, well, once again, he's met Logan and he's Yuben captured the WBC international title in 1990 against Hugo Corti. He knocked out Ronaldo dos Santos in precisely 20 seconds. I am the man and I will continue to be the man for as long as I am undefeated. I am the man. Yuben wanted Ben and his world title, brashly asserting that he would defeat Ben. Take the man punching power away and he's not in my class. I'm there already. He's got to prove himself. Not me. The fight was held in November of 1990 at the National Exhibition Center in the English Midland city of Birmingham. 
This was Ben's second title defense and it was clear in the build-up that these two were never going to be friends even after the final bell. This was a war and no man wanted to lose. This is to be an after the noble art. The fight came to an end in the ninth when Eubank unleashed a left-right combination. Eubank went for the kill and sent the champion into the corner with a straight right. He hurt me up the guts. He opened my tongue, my tongue's open. What a tremendous fighter he is. He deserves it, man. He deserves it. Eubank would defend the title successfully against Dan Sherry, Gary Stretch, and finally in an excellent match with Michael Watson. His trademark dim tune was Tina Turner's Simply the Best Anthem. It also included often hilarious posturing. A rematch with Watson took place in September 1991, at which Watson suffered a near-fatal injury. Now the holder of a second title, the WBO World Super Middleweight Championship, Eubank relinquished his middleweight title and concentrated on defending his new crown to which he was more suited. Nigel Benn also moved to super middleweight and the drama continued. Blowing away the likes of Robbie Sims and Dan Sherry on his way to beating Mauro Galvano for the WBC Championship in October 1992. Oh, the Welsh Maniki Piper lasted 11 rounds and the Londoner Lugent went in four in what Ben called a right old tear up. Are we going to get this fight on? Uh, Nigel, if accept it, I accept. I mean, let's do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm here, I'm ready. It would be three years later before Eubank and Ben shared the ring together. The pair agreed to meet in a WBC-WBO unification rematch named Judgment Day and watch reportedly by a record half billion viewers worldwide. But this is Britain's biggest betting fight ever. Over two million pounds is reckoned to be staked. This fight was not as brutal as their first meeting, but the dislike between the two was still there. Both fighters traded blows, but neither man could find the knockout punch. The 12th and final round was one of the best rounds of boxing ever seen at that time. Slipping on the, canvas there. Left hook. the contest ended in a draw with Eubank retaining his WBO super middleweight belt and Ben keeping hold of WBC super middleweight title. Eubank, despite losing his killer instinct after the Watson tragedy, continued to box and claim scalps. Oh, right. Eubank was defeated and lost his title, an unbeaten record to Steve Collins in March 1995. Collins his final appearance in a super middleweight title fight resulted in being floored twice and losing on points to Jock Kelzaghi who acknowledged that the 12 round fight was the toughest in his career. Eubank finished his career with a credible record of 45 wins and 5 losses. Eubank has been stopped for the first time in his career. Ben defended his title two more times before defended it against middleweight champion Gerald McClellan in February 1995. McClellan was severely injured as a result of the fight. Oh. Ben ended his career following the second loss to Collins on November 9, 1996. He retired with a record of 42-5 with 35 knockouts. We left something. He left his job with his monocle and his hall. He left something. I was being a warrior. That's what people came to see. That's why half a billion people watched the second fight I had with Nigel Ben. Sadly, the third fight never happened. Their two sons will continue the rivalry. <laughs>